I will make a start now. Um, so today's webinar is on uh, spend management, um, also known as purchase to pay or procure to pay. There's quite a few different terms for basically purchasing. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through this presentation uh, and then we'll dive into the system to actually see it in, in action. So, okay, a little bit of background on um, Cloud Team ourselves. So the company was founded in 2014. Um, our speciality, our focus is Financial Force ERP. Uh, which is native to uh, the Salesforce platform. So everything's built on the Salesforce platform itself, um, using all their kind of tools and coding techniques and so on. Um, and we also create a lot of kind of apps, um, you know, mainly to kind of work with Financial Force, um, but kind of, you know, native to the, the, the Salesforce platform as well. Um, so we kind of offer technical and business consultancy. So, you know, we've got technical guys who can code, do coding and, you know, make development changes and create apps and update apps and so on. And, you know, we have a number of consultants who, you know, focus on business processes and so on, work very closely with customers and so on uh, to, to ensure that um, you know, an implementation goes well. So some of the different services we offer, we offer a support service. So if you're already on Salesforce Financial Force and need ongoing support, that's something that Financial Force offers. Um, consultancy services, um, as I kind of mentioned, the implementation services, and along with that, you know, application development and so on. Um, we've done a number of kind of, you know, different implementations. Um, financial force, as I mentioned, is, you know, kind of our main um, focus, but we kind of, you know, we do uh, work with other applications such as Sales Trip um, and uh, a few kind of apps that we've developed ourselves, um, such as Pisa, um, a cash matching app and so on. Okay, so spend management itself. Okay, so this is the whole point of spend management systems to avoid this kind of scenario where you've got multiple spreadsheets, you're kind of keying in information left, right and center, you're re kind of reconcil uh, reconciling information and emails and so on to track all your spend, you know, get your approvals and so on. Um, this kind of simplifies everything, um, especially if you're on Salesforce itself. Um, you've got a, you know, you have the opportunity to have a purchasing system within Salesforce itself, so it all kind of flows nicely. It's all integrated. You don't need to go out of the system. You don't need to handle information in separate service spreadsheets and emails and so on. And it's a, a pretty kind of basic flow. Most purchase to pay procure to pay systems follow this kind of flow, but. You know, you have a purchase order or potentially you could start off with a requisition, but a purchase order that, um, which, you know, details what you actually want to purchase, your supplier items and so on, um, which is then approved internally. Uh, once it's approved, there's a few more steps. Um, you know, the purchase order is then sent to your supplier uh, if you, through different means, whether it's kind of by email or, you know, um, mainly by email nowadays, to be honest, but, you know, facts in the past, that kind of thing. Um, the supplier sends you the goods. You receive the goods in the system. Um, they will send you an invoice and you will kind of, you know, match your purchase order, your invoice and the receipt. It's called a three-way match uh, just to show, ensure that everything's, you know, correct and makes sense. So it's a check basically to make sure that what you ordered on the purchase order matches up with what you're you know being invoiced for and that you've actually received the goods okay um so spend management itself so we kind of talked about this floor just now um and we've kind of you know covered some of the benefits but uh, there's a few extra one, extra ones in here so it kind of gives you an opportunity to gather information you spend um you know you can potentially kind of uh, target certain categories. So if you're spending a lot on office supplies, you can maybe kind of look at that and and negotiate with your um, suppliers or find a, a supplier, especially buying a certain item and, you know, kind of get it at a better price and so on. Um, and it gives you complete, complete control and a lot of kind of, you know, automation. Uh, you can do kind of additional. There's already automation in there, um, but you can kind of do additional kind of, you know, automation um, as well. Okay, 
So yeah, some of the the uh, benefits, um, you know, I just touched on that uh, just now, but you know, it gives you control over your spend. You know, if it's direct or indirect. Um, you know, helps you kind of uh, negotiate with custom um, suppliers and you know get some supplier agreements in place. Uh, compliance, it's very good for compliance. You know, it uh, gives you the opportunity to see exactly what's going on in the system and report on it and so on. Um, you can enforce spend policies through supplier catalogs, you know, uh, approvals and workflows and so on. And it gives you an overall view of what's going on with your spend. And it gives you the opportunity to, you know, kind of source new suppliers and so on and um, continuously improve, improve things and, um, you know, see what's going on with your spend really. Okay. Um, ERP spend management, just to give you an idea um, of how long it takes. Uh, just spend management by itself could potentially take 40 hours, um, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, this is what how a basic uh, spend management f uh, implementation kind of flow goes. So we configure it in a sandbox, set up your approvals, some training, move it to UAT and uh, do some documentation. But I won't focus too much on this part at the moment. Um, we've also got a invoice scan app. I'll just touch on that. Um, that is for the three we're matching, but that'll be covered in a uh, separate session, probably the next one, because it integrates very nicely, kind of flows on from spend management um, quite nicely. But um, yeah, I won't really kind of go into that. That'll be in the kind of next session. Okay, so um, let's dive into the system. Have a look. So there is a tab. When you log in to uh, Salesforce, there will be a tab called Purchase Orders. You can have, you can do requisitions as well, but I'm just going to kind of focus on per straight purchase orders, kind of starting from that point. So when I kind of go into the Purchase Order tab, it gives me this um, list view, and it's kind of, it's uh, you know, this can be configured to show whatever fields that you want and whatever information, but it gives you a general overview of your purchase orders. Um, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, it just kind of gives you a view of, of all your purchase orders, but let's create a new purchase order. So there's a, a new button up here. So if I click on new, so this page opens up. Um, to be honest, there's two types of purchase order um, that you, you know, got to really hear, uh, which is a, a normal purchase order and a drop ship. A drop ship for um, you know your information is when you order goods um, and you want to you know let's say you have a customer who wants to buy something but you need to order it in you order it order it from your supplier but it's delivered directly to your customer so it's not coming back to you it's you're kind of you know getting it um, delivered directly to your customer so that's drop ship but uh, you know majority of the time uh, you'll be using internal purchase order um, and that's the one we'll kind of look at today. So if I click on next, it opens up the screen. So this is kind of, think of it as a header and, uh, you know, kind of lines. So this is your header information. So your high level information. So if you've kind of, if you have numerous companies set up, um, you know, on your Salesforce platform, um, you know, you might have a European illegal entity and a, you know, an Asian ent entity, a UK, France, whatever. So you might have multiple companies, but I'm just going to pick uh, Merlin Technologies. So this is a test environment. So a lot of this is uh, just test information. So supplier site. So this is who I'm going to order the goods off. So I'm going, going to pick this uh, supplier, Avnet Technologies. The ship to warehouse is where your goods are going to be delivered. Um, yeah, the name's slightly misleading, but this is basically your ship to address, your delivery address. So I'm going to... I'm going to pick this finished goods west, yep. You can put in a buyer, um, you know, the person who's actually, uh, you know, creating this purchase order. And to be honest, the stuff on the right-hand side, we don't really have to worry too much about it. The key information really here is who you're ordering it off, your supplier, where you want it delivered to, and, you know, potentially your company if you've got numerous companies. So if I save that, we have kind of a header information. So we need to add the items now.
Okay, so you can see here, you know, this is the information that we added on. And uh, you can see here in this top row, it's quite nice. It used to be slightly different, but here it gives you kind of, um, you know, all the kind of uh, links and to anything related to the purchase order itself. So what we need to add is the items themselves. So you can see here, there's a tab called purchase order line items. So if I click on there, it gives me the option of adding a item to the purchase order itself. So I'm going to do that. So if I click on new. So, okay, this is quite interesting. So when I'm trying to add an item, it gives me a whole list of different types of items that I want to add. Um, I won't go, in, go into it in too much depth. Um, but most of the time you'll pick item or capital equipment. Um, items, to be honest, are really kind of used for inventory purposes. Um, we won't go into, I don't, you know, I won't go into that in too much depth, but that's when you kind of, you know, have the whole supply chain package um, in financial force where you want to actually kind of, you know, bring goods into a warehouse, you know, track their movements and so on. Um, but yeah, you can use description as well. Description is probably what you'll use the most if you're not having inventory and so on, um, and capital equipment. So yeah, um, you know, you have these different types of items you can select and they kind of do different things in the system. Um, but we're going to use item just for this, uh, demonstration itself. But, you know, by all means, um, in a demo, I'll have a look at these, um, and they're kind of self-explanatory in terms of what they kind of do in the system. For example, capital equipment, um, it won't go into inventory um, and so on. So if I click on next, so item being, being procured. So I'm going to pick this item. So these are items that are already created in the system. Um, I'm going to select a quantity. So you can see the ones with the red star are mandatory fields. Yep, supplier commitment date. So there's a couple of dates here where um, you can enter, you know, when you expect the goods to come in. So there's an eye shows you, you know, information about the field. It gives an explanation and so on. So this is the original date the supplier is committed to. The current promise date is slightly different. Um, but yeah, again, you can kind of um, have a look at them in your own time. So you can, you notice here that there's uh, uh, the warehouse field again. So you can have it on the header. So if you want, you know, kind of if you have multiple items and you want them all delivered to one place, um, then you would kind of, you know, pick it where we did in the first place on the header. But if you wanted items, you know, separate, uh, uh, your individual items sent to different, um, you know, delivery addresses, then you'd kind of pick the warehouse at the item level. Okay, so unit costs. I'm not going to put a price in here um, and I'll show you why. Um, in a little bit. The rest you don't have to worry about. That's the main information. So I'm going to save that. Okay. So we have our purchase order created now. So if I go back to the header, so you can see here at the moment we're on the line. So we go back to the header. It takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but once you get used to it, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely fine. Um, it's like with any system, you know, when it's new, it's uh, a little bit kind of uh, tricky to kind of get used to, but once you kind of get used to it, it's uh, it's great. Uh, okay, so we are on the purchase order itself. So we've created a purchase order. The next step is usually somebody needs to approve it within the organization, um, just to kind of make sure everything's correct um, and so on. Um, sorry, there's a step before that, actually. We didn't put a price in, right? So if you notice here on the right hand side, there's a price button. And if you see total value PO there at the moment, it's zero. If I click on price, you can see now the value's changed. And if we go to the line, it should have done it on the line as well. So I had a quantity of two unit cost to um, 200. So you're probably asking yourself, how did that price come about? So if you guys are familiar with spend management, uh, purchase to pay, um, you've probably um, heard or know of the concept of like supplier catalog. So a supplier catalog is basically um, a catalog, uh, which is based on supplier where you would enter items um, with a price against them. 
So they're kind of predefined prices. So I won't show you the catalog um, because we haven't got much time. But yeah, you can set up catalogs so that when you're creating a purchase or big purchase order, um, when you select an item in combination with a certain supplier, uh, when you click on the price, it'll generate the price automatically rather than you kind of, you know, manually entering it and trying to find out what the price is and so on. So that's where the prices come about from. So the next step is, okay, it's fully priced and so on. I want to send it for approval. So there's a, an approval button here. So at the moment, if we look at the purchase order, uh, the status is open. I'm going to click on submit for approval. Okay, and you can see now it's changed to approved. So at the moment, because this is a test environment and this demonstration, what we've done is we've set it to auto approve. So if somebody clicks on submit, but you know you can set up an approval rule. It's using the Salesforce approval um, approvals engine um, to set up whatever approval rules you want. So you know, for example, you could have usually um, a lot of companies would have you know um, amount based. So you know, if it's a purchase order that's um, under 500 euros, then it needs to go to this person for approval. If it's between 500 and 1,000, it needs to go to that, you know, um, that person and the next person and so on. So you can, you know, build your um, approval rules based on, you know, your company policies and so on. It's, uh, yeah, and it's all it's using, you know, Salesforce approval rules and so on. So, yeah, that's where some of the kind of uh, approvals and compliance kind of comes into play. So we have a purchase order now that's approved. So I just want to show you something else. I've kind of set it up so that, you know, um, I can show you. So the purchase orders created, approved internally. So we need to send it to the supplier. So again, here you can see a button. There's a send button. So if I click on send, so I've kind of, you know, configured it so that the purchase order is sent to me by email. And what should happen is, it should send me the purchase order by email. There might be a slight delay, or it might not come through at all. Okay, it's not come through, maybe it'll come through later on, but what it should do is, um, if it's configured properly, um, it will send a purchase order to a designated email address. So the purchase order has been sent, the supplier's received it, they've kind of, you know, picked all the goods out, sent them to you, so you've actually physically received them at your, um, you know, delivery address. So what you need to do next is you need to receive them in the system, so again, um, on the purchase order itself, you've got receipts. I'm just making sure that my uh, outbox is, uh, email box is open so that uh, we get the email. So you can see uh, this screen here. So if I click on new, so this is your receipt. So if you do it from the, there we go. So this is the purchase order that I mentioned earlier. Again, this is a standard template. Yep. This is a, a standard template that's in the system, but you know this can be changed based on your requirements, but it shows the key information. Supplier shipped to you know your quantity item and so on. Okay, so let's go back to the purchase order. So if you, so you can see when I've kind of created a receipt from the purchase order itself, it's pulled over the purchase order information. So if I click on continue, um, it picks up the, the line itself and it picks up whatever you ordered. It, as you can see, it's kind of picked up quantity too. So um, what you can do is you can under receive, so I could put one in there and you can potentially over receive as well. But by default, the system won't allow you to over receive. Um, there's an override setting, but you have to be a little bit careful if you're going to over receive because it does have kind of, you know, consequences further down the line. But, you know, it is possible to, you know, under receiving is standard, you know, um, that, that happens quite a lot, but over receiving is possible as well, but it does kind of uh, require uh, an override setting. Okay, so I'm just going to do a receipt now. 
Okay, so our purchase order in the flow of things, what we've done is we created a purchase order uh, with an item on it. Um, we priced it using a supplier catalog. Um, we sent it for approval, got it approved, sent the uh, purchase order to our supplier, who's, who in turn sent us the goods. We've received them in the system. So um, now let's say the supplier has sent you an invoice yeah, to actually pay for what you've ordered. So you physically kind of received it. So we're on the purchase order itself, and you can see here there's something called AP vouchers. Yep. If I click on here, there's nothing there at the moment. If I click on new, you'll always click open. Uh, you, you can ignore these two. If I click on new, this is where you would enter the invoice information that your supplier sent. So, for example, you know, I'm just going to put in invoice. Yep. But you'd actually have an invoice number there, but you know that's physically in front of you. Um, I'm going to put in the invoice date. So let's say it's today's date. Due date is defaulting from within the system. Again, this is header information. So that's the key information at this point, really. Um, you don't need to really worry about um, the rest. So this is the header. So we do, for this part of the process, the AP voucher match and the invoicing, um, you know, we have an offering ourselves as cloud team. Um, it's called PISA, Invoice Scan App, where basically the, you know, your supplier would send you the invoice um, as a PDF attachment. So when you're doing, you know, this part, which I'm going to show you, which is the invoice matching and the posting and so on, you've actually got the invoice scanned in the system and you can kind of, you know, compare it and so on. But that'll be kind of demoed in a, in a uh, separate um, session. I think it's the next one coming up. So this is the header of the AP voucher. Okay, so you can see there's a, se a section here called AP voucher lines. So what this will do is it's basically going to look up the lines of, of the purchase order. So you have an invoice in front of you. You want to kind of check it against what's, um, you know, if it uh, matches against what's uh, on your purchase order itself. So this is direct lookup to the purchase order. So as you can see, it's what we ordered originally. So add purchase order lines. You still have the ability to change things here, unit cost and quantity. Sorry, I should have shown you that. Um, but that's another story, put it that way. Um, you can see here there's a couple of fields, uh, extended PV, PPV and uni, unit PPV. But that, I think that, you know, that's, a, um, how can I put it, um, more of an advanced step. So that's when your purchase orders and your invoices don't match, um, how to deal with them. Um, but, you know, um, we'll kind of cover that in another session at some point. So anyway, we've got our invoice. We've we're basically checked it against our purchase order. You know, in an ideal scenario, they all match up. Um, and you can see here is actually doing a check as well that have you actually received the goods? You have. And at that point, if you click on match, what you're basically saying when you do the match is my purchase order, my invoice, they match up in terms of quantities, items, and prices. And I'm just checking in the system that I've actually received the goods. Hence the kind of um, term that's used, three-way match, um, which some of you might be familiar with. Okay, so we've done our three-way match. You can see here it's matched. And what we're, well, the next step would be, and I won't kind of go into it because we're kind of go delving into finance world, um, but it would be to kind of, you know, push the SFA. What this does is it actually then creates uh, a, an invoice within your system, um, you know, to be paid, basically. So that is a whistle-stop tour of spend management. I'd just like to show you one more thing. Um, reports, there's a whole folder um, on purchase orders, uh, 
you know, reports on purchase orders. These are the standard ones, but you know, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with Salesforce. It's, you know, as long as you have the information within Salesforce, it's pretty easy to build reports. So if one of these, you know, doesn't quite hit the mark and isn't quite fit for purpose, you can always amend it or, or build your own report. Um, so there is a whole suite of reports there as well. Okay, so that's band management in a very quick whistle stop tour. By all means, if you do have any questions, feel free to you know kind of uh, reach out, send me an email, get in contact, um, and I'll try and assist you as best as possible. But thank you very much for taking the time to um, attend this band management and um, webinar, and hope you found it useful. Thank you very much.